Hello developers! This is the video you've been looking for if you want to truly understand GSAP. We're not just scratching the surface. We're diving deep into how GSAP works, how to control animations, and how to make your UI feel smooth and dynamic. Today, we're diving into something magical. Have you ever scrolled through a website and seen elements smoothly animate into place, creating a stunning visual experience? Have you ever wondered how scrolling itself can trigger animations dynamically? What if I told you that you can have full control over these animations with just a few lines of GSAP? Well, that's exactly what we're going to build today. We're using GSAP and Scroll Trigger to create a scroll-based animation where grid items smoothly move into position while the heading fades away. But here's a tricky question for you. How do we make animations feel natural instead of robotic? Think about it. What's the secret behind those seamless scroll interactions that feel effortless yet powerful? What are we going to learn in this video? How to structure your HTML for scroll-based animations. The CSS tricks that position and style elements before animation. A deep dive into GSAP animations, including timelines and transformations. How scroll trigger works and how to control animations with scrolling. The key differences between scrub, pin, and toggle actions and scroll trigger. And most importantly, how to make animations smooth and engaging. Stick around, because by the end of this video, you won't just know the answer, you'll be able to create these effects yourself. And before we start, make sure to subscribe to the channel. We create videos like this that take a lot of effort, and every subscription motivates me to make more. Watch this video till the end, and let's break it all down step by step, starting with the HTML structure. We start with the main wrapper inside the body. This acts as our main container for everything. Inside that, we have a section with a class name for showcase. This will be the section where all our animated elements live. Next, we have a div with a class name for grid wrapper. This will help us organize the elements inside the showcase section. Inside that wrapper, there's an H1 element with a class name for showcase heading. This will be our main heading, which we will animate by making it fade and scale down when scrolling. Below that, there's a div with a class name for grid. This is the actual grid where all our items will be placed. And finally, inside this grid, we have eight div elements with a class name for grid item. These are the elements that will move into position smoothly as we scroll. That's our structure, simple yet powerful. Now, let's move on to styling. First, we reset everything using the universal selector, setting margin and padding to zero and using a box sizing property to make sure everything fits neatly inside its container. Then, we set up the body with a light gray background color and a modern font for a clean look. The showcase section is set to a height of 300 viewport heights. This ensures we have enough scroll space to trigger our animations. Now comes the most important part, the grid layout. We define it using a display property for grid and specify column gaps and row gaps to space out the grid items. We also set specific template values for columns and rows to arrange them dynamically. Each grid item has a white background color with some padding and flex properties. But here's where the magic begins. We use transform properties to place each grid item in a different position. Some move up, some move down, some shift left or right. This gives a scattered effect initially, making it look unorganized before the animation brings them into place. The heading has a gradient color applied using multiple background properties. But here's something special. Instead of applying the gradient directly, we use a background clip property to make the text itself take the color of the gradient while keeping the background transparent. This makes the heading pop. All right, now that our structure and styling are set, let's get to the real magic, GSAP animations. We start by creating a timeline animation using GSAP. This timeline helps us chain multiple animations together so they play in sequence. First, we define an array of colors that will apply to the grid items one by one as they animate in. Then, we select all the grid items and loop through them. Inside the loop, we add two animations, one that moves each grid item to its original position using a transform property, another that changes its background color using the array we defined earlier. But here's something tricky. Why don't we set a delay or duration inside this loop? Instead, we set the animation at position zero on the timeline. 
This means all animations happen at the same time. When we set zero as the position parameter inside the to method, it means that all animations in the loop will start at the same time on the timeline instead of playing one after the other. Why do we do this? By default, GSAP staggers animations sequentially when inside a loop. But setting zero ensures that every grid item starts its animation at the exact same point on the timeline, creating a synchronized effect where all grid items animate simultaneously. What happens if we remove zero? If we remove the position parameter, GSAP will automatically queue each animation one after the other, causing a sequential animation effect where one grid item moves, then the next, and so on. This can be useful if you want a staggered reveal effect instead of everything animating at once. What other values can we use here? Instead of zero, we can use a number that delays this animation by that many seconds from the start of the timeline, a relative value. That moves this animation backward or forward relative to the last animation in the timeline. Labels that syncs animations to a specific named point in the timeline. So by controlling this parameter, we decide whether animations happen at the same time one after another or with custom timing. Next, we animate the showcase heading by reducing its opacity and scaling it down. This makes it look like the heading disappears as the grid items take over the scene. Now, let's talk about scroll trigger. This is the secret ingredient that makes everything react to scrolling instead of just playing automatically. We create a new scroll trigger instance and set it up with several options. The trigger option is set to the showcase section. This means the animation will start when this section comes into view. The start option is set to top top. This means the animation begins when the top of the section touches the top of the viewport. The end option is set to bottom bottom. This means the animation will continue until the bottom of the section reaches the bottom of the viewport. The toggle actions option is set to restart none reverse. This means the animation will restart when scrolling back up, but won't trigger again once played. The scrub option is set to true. This is super important. It makes the animation sync with scrolling instead of playing instantly. The pin option is set to the grid wrapper. This makes the entire grid stay fixed while animations happen inside it. And finally, we attach the timeline animation we created earlier to this scroll trigger instance. So what happens? As we scroll down, the grid items move into place, change colors, and the heading fades away. It's smooth, interactive, and looks amazing. And here's a little challenge for you. What would happen if we removed the scrub option? Think about it. The answer is simple. The animation would play all at once as soon as the trigger activates instead of being tied to the scroll position. That's the beauty of scroll trigger. It gives us precise control over how and when animations happen. So in this tutorial, we've covered the HTML structure and how we organize elements for animations, the CSS properties that position everything and create the scattered effect, the GSAP timeline that moves and colors the grid items dynamically, and finally, the scroll trigger options that make everything respond to scrolling. This project might look complex at first, but when broken down, it's just a combination of grid layout, transforms, GSAP animations, and scroll trigger options. Try it out, experiment with different values, and see how small changes can create entirely different effects. And before you go, subscribe to the channel for more CSS tips. See you in the next video.